Hello everyone. So today on the channel, I wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, we're just gonna go in unscripted and take a look at a match report. I look at my game reports pretty much after every match and I really get into the details and I try to see if there's anything that I can learn about my own gameplay or maybe understand the opponents and see what they did better or where maybe I was going wrong. And it's really helped me a lot improve my gameplay. But you need to know what to look for when you're looking in a game report because there's so much information, it's so easy just to get lost. So let's dive right in here and take a look and see what we can learn. So uh, Blue actually sent me this report uh, and I think it's a really good one because it's it's well-rounded and it's on CES. So, I mean, everybody plays CES. So this is something you should all be familiar with. So first thing that you see, of course, is the population graph. And this gives you a pretty good story of what's going on. You can see here that yellow really took some damage and they just could not really recover. Uh, and it's a really long match. I mean, hour 20 minutes on CES is just brutal. So I just would be so bored. I would not be enjoying this by an hour. So the fact that yellow is still even trying to recover is actually really impressive. So let's take a closer look here and see if we can learn something. So first thing that really catches my attention is this big drop here in yellow. So let's see why uh, that might have happened. And a good thing that to look at is the population breakdown. And immediately what I see is yellow was running way too many warriors. Cess is a map that's almost entirely about the shaman. The paths are so skinny that you just can't effectively use this quantity of warriors. And remember that troops cost mana. Training troops cost mana and having troops at all means that you don't have those followers as braves. And braves produce something that's over three times more mana than the troops do. Uh, especially in huts, braves in large huts produce even more mana. They get an extra bonus for being in a large hut. So having this number of warriors just really shows that he's positioning himself not generally the best way to position yourself on Cess. And you can see here, as soon as you start to run low on fire warriors, here he hits zero fire warriors, that's when he takes the big damage. And it's just brutal from that point forward. He loses all his warriors. And if you look back on the graph here, when he loses his warriors at 40 minutes, let's take a look. You can see that he lost all of this and the black line barely dropped at all. It had a little drop here, which means that for all the damage he took, he didn't trade anything back. So having those warriors was totally pointless. They all died and accomplished essentially nothing. And that means that he didn't have those as braves producing mana. So we talked a little bit about population, but population doesn't always tell the full story. If we just put the population aside and take a look at buildings, this tells the other side of the story that often gets overlooked. Of course, we know yellow fell behind. So yellow here is the lowest, uh, not too much interesting to see there. But what does catch my eye is this drop in red. So on the population graph, we barely noticed that. That didn't register at all. But when you look now, and I'm just looking at his graph, you can see that he did drop a little. He did lose 30 pop here, but that really undersells the damage that he took here. Uh, and that's really testament to Red's skill in running all his pop to safety and only losing 30 pop for a de devastating attack that destroyed more than half his buildings. So let's see if we can find out what caused this. Uh, it clearly wasn't yellow. So, ah, and there it is. So he took two firestorms and a volcano and somehow only lost 30 pop on Cess. It's hard to run your pop to safety on such a small map, but he did it really well and immediately recovered and came back and had a huge pop explosion up to 200 almost. So, all right, so great job to Red for surviving the firestorms and the volcano and mitigating the damage to the point where he only lost 30 pop and was able to recover and quickly get all the way up back up to 200. That's great. Uh, so let's take a look now at what else we can learn. I'd say let's always take a look at the destruction spells. Uh, you, you're always going to want to know who's throwing what, and you're going to see if somebody's running a tornado heavy build and if that worked for them, or when, or why. Um, obviously, you want to know who's got the firestorms and if they were using them effectively or if they were just casting a firestorm to kill one shaman, for example. Uh, that's a huge waste of firestorm considering it's the cost of five lightnings and also it's not really fun to play against because there's not a lot of counterplay to it i would try to avoid doing that it can be effective especially if you've got a huge lead in population absolutely firestorm spamming can be effective but personally i like to try to run builds that are fun to play against 
as much as they are effective at actually winning the game. So I do use a lot of Firestorm, but I do try to hold them and use them in particularly good situations where you're going to kill a lot of troops, you're going to kill maybe both shamans, you're going to use it as a last ditch effort to just defend your base. You're using it so that you can advance with your shaman and you're getting it and you're doing damage. So of course the destruction spell is always useful information. But something that gets overlooked is the attack spells. Uh, attack spells show uh, your utility and new, new players really undervalue the utility spells, especially Swarm. Uh, Swarm is a pretty low mana cost spell. It's half the cost of lightning and it's incredibly versatile and damaging. So I think that's something that we need to take a look at here and see who's throwing out a, a lot of utility. So you can see red and blue are doing a pretty decent amount. Yellow is a little bit light. He's probably too lightning heavy. Uh, can, Again, lightning is kind of expensive uh, to just be throwing them around and accomplishing very little and not really throwing a lot of swarms or ghosts or and really almost no ghost armies at all. Um, and ghost armies a quarter of the cost of a lightning. So I understand he's behind, he's light on mana, but that is just even more reason why he should be running a swarm and ghost army heavy build instead of trying to go for these bigger spells like lightnings and tornadoes. You need Earthquakes, because Earthquakes are great for the damage to mana ratio, but, I mean, he's running a lot of Tornadoes, a uh, lot of Lightnings, and not enough uh, Swarm, and almost no Ghost Army whatsoever. Uh, especially when your mana is light, especially when you're low on mana, that's when you need to be running Ghost Army and Swarm. So let's take a look here at Green, and it's just phenomenal. You can see he's putting out a tremendous amount of pressure with this. Um, fortunately, it wasn't enough, but it... By the end of this match, the last half hour of the match, it was basically a 2v1. So really great work to Green for being able to put out the pressure that he did. And lastly, I'd like to scroll down and take a look at the numbers down here. Uh, there's not too much that I'm really looking for, but there are a couple really important lines. Uh, everybody's looking at their shaman kills to death ratio. Um, like any first person shooter, everyone wants to know their, their KDR. Generally, if it's an even matchup, you should be expecting to go pretty even. So you can see here he's 35 and 35. That's pretty standard. Uh, that's that's decent. That's fine if you're going 35 and 35. You can see here 34 and 27. That's actually really good. That was a, a nice strong match. Uh, you can see yellow uh, just got obliterated. This is abysmal. I mean, he died almost. He died more than twice the number of times. That's really horrible. Uh, and leaving it to green to really put the team on his back here. And let's see how he did. Actually, really, really great. Um, that's incredibly difficult to have a, a score like that against um, warrior ranks, like halfway decent players. Uh, that's, that's impressive. That's a good score. And the last thing I wanted to take a look at is the enemy followers killed metric. This is perhaps the most important. Remember, the goal of the game is to kill every single follower of the enemy tribe. So the only way to do that is to kill followers. This is the amount of pressure you're putting out. This means that you're getting in and you're getting your destruction spells off. It means that you're trooping really well. Uh, it's not so much a ratio of enemy followers killed to followers lost. Instead, what I take a look at is just my follower kills versus everybody else's. I want to know that I'm at least on par with the other players, but if I'm the highest rank in the match, I want to have the highest number of kills. If I'm the lowest rank in the match, then it's all right if I'm a little bit behind. But you don't, what you don't want to see is everyone's in, you know, 500, 400, almost 700, and then you're rocking 200. This is not enough. This is, this is, this right here is probably the single biggest reason that uh, this team lost is because this number is just so abysmally low. And yes, this is low because this is low but not exclusively because of the shaman kills. This is low because he's not trooping effectively. It's low because his own population is low, so he's not, he doesn't have the power to actually do any damage. And it's low because he's not charging the right spells. With the little bit of mana he has, he could be way more effective at getting some damage out. If he's running more earthquakes and he's getting swarms so that he can actually penetrate and get those earthquakes in, or at the very least, at the very least, what you want to know what you're doing is that you're clear in mid for your ally. Maybe you don't have the strength to actually penetrate, but you're you're just absolutely vicious and you're clear in mid. You're taking that hill. You're getting your own warriors, even if it's just a couple. Your shaman is there blasting like crazy. Blast is so cheap, you're just blasting. 
blast and blast and all their fire warriors, all their warriors into the water, and just trying to keep your shaman alive. Even if you're not getting shaman kills, but you're there and you're getting follower kills and you're keeping her alive, you're holding the line, you're putting out pressure, and you're going to give your ally the opportunity to go in and get those 700 follower kills. So uh, that's about it. That's about everything I like to take a look at here. Uh, you can, of course, dive in deeper and really look at the follower breakdown. I think you can really learn a lot from this. Really analyze this and see where players go wrong and see where they go right. Uh, there's great information here. Um, there's one thing that I do want to say that I don't look at is the ping. I really find this to not be very useful or accurate at all. Um, my experiences with the ping really don't line up with what the graph says. I'll have games where it's perfectly butter smooth, but the graph says I'm rocking 240 ping. But then I'll play matches where it's awful and there's spikes and it's just a disaster. I'm losing clicks and it'll show, you know, like this, like, oh, it looks like he's got uh, 50 ping here. And everyone's making fun of you now because you complained about lag and the graph shows that you have 50 ping. I just really don't find that to be useful. I never judge other players based off that. Just we all get lag sometimes. We all do. We all lose clicks sometimes. So I just try not to be too judgy of other players when they when things go wrong. Like, look, maybe Yellow was just having a really bad day. He just he looks like he just came back from a long break. Maybe he was lagging really bad. And honestly, if he wasn't complaining about lag, then good on him for being a good sport and just taking the loss and after an hour and 15 minutes still fighting it out to the bitter end. That's great. Uh, I'm not going to take a look and say, oh, well, he only had 50 ping, so... Uh, he should have been better. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to assume that he wasn't lagging. I'm just going to be thankful that he didn't complain all match and that he was a good sport. All right, so I think that about wraps everything up. This is a new type of video for me, so if you like this type of content, please drop a comment and let me know. I've been playing this game for over 20 years, so I definitely have more to talk about. Populous really is a game of infinite depth, so I hope you subscribe and we can enjoy this ride together. There's always more to learn, always more to figure out. Thanks for watching.